Tav Falco is a musician, artist, actor, filmmaker and photographer. Moving to Memphis in the early 1970s, Tav collaborated in both film and music with the likes of Alex Chilton, The Cramps, R.R. Burnside and Jesse May Hemphill. As fans of his work, Fat White Family first met Tav when they joined a bill with him at the Blues Kitchen Camden back in 2014. With Tav returning to London on a run of European shows, we reintroduced the guys and let them put the world to rights. Um, so Tav, second time around, right? First time was with the Fat White Family, supporting you, and then this time, just on my, uh, my lonesome. <laughs> but uh, you had a hard time coming in, right? Like, no, it wasn't too they bad. They keep you in, 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 in customs. No, or no, no problem. Yeah, man. Shirt, no so. problem. You came from where? Vienna. Vienna, and that's where you live, right? I'm in Vienna now in the theater district. And you've lived I'm there. getting away from the rock and roll world, you know, to get a little peace of mind. But that's what I was going to ask, right? like... Uh, uh, art, music, you know, the real shit. To go from Memphis to Vienna, you know, Well, it's Vienna's another got... river town, man. <laughs> it's another yeah, river, you know, yeah. Memphis on the Mississippi, Vienna on the Danube. But... I mean, what a, what a difference, you know, you've got, huge it's like high society. I mean, Memphis has its own, you know, sort of like, like rock and roll, ro royalty of rock and roll. But well, more. Memphis is high fashion on Beale Street. Yeah. And Vienna is high society. That's like going back a couple house. more hundred years yeah. before that, you know. But, you know. I don't know, what, what like made every, you go there? Well, like it's everything like, in my life, it was a beautiful woman. Yeah. And that drew me yeah. to yeah. Austria in the beginning. Yeah. And then I began to see uh, a cultural gradient mm -hmm. that wasn't necessarily attractive, but it was something challenging <laughs> and, and, and historically exciting. Yeah. And yeah. then I was exposed to art and music and culture. Was it something that was like the other, like you Yeah, in a sense, yes. Because it you've was, seen the, the rock and roll. And yeah, I, I grew so up this, that. This, it's like falling off a log, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. for an American yeah. to be there in Europe, whether Rome or Venice or so Vienna or Paris. So it wasn't a musical decision. It wasn't like... No. Because you know like... No, um, not at all. You know like a lot of, uh, for example, jazz musicians in the 50s. You know, they, they're a bit tired of the American musical landscape and then they go to Europe and it was like this fertile ground of artistic and musical you know like landscape and it, it was just that they, they they got like it was like a new lease of life for them sure so it wasn't exactly, like that. precisely well something of that but, but there was something you were of kind that. of like looking for like a whole well new plane or something you know I was looking for something outside of myself yeah something that I had not grown up with that I had not experienced, yeah. but only had an intimation about. Yeah, yeah. Even the kind of smaller places, they've got some kind of story that the hip pick up on, and then it becomes that tired story. It's kind of a shame, you know. Like, I mean, it's like uh, Patty Smith said, forget New York, you can't live there now. Yeah. You got to find another New York somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I think she's right. Yeah. Your photography. I like that. The, 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 the book, was it 99? An iconography of chance, 99 photographs of the Evanescent South. Okay, I went to Memphis from Arkansas. People were talking about Bill Eggleston. At the time. Yeah. And we wanted to introduce you to Bill. Mm. But they never did. Nobody ever did. Right. So then I finally, one day, I just rode my motorcycle up to his mansion <laughs> in the Garden District of Vienna. I rode my Norton up there. Really? I rode a Norton for you. I'm still riding a Norton. 1961 Norton. So, I uh, rode my bike up there, and he came right out of the house. He said, hello, we talked. He said, come on into the dark room, let's start working. I said, I'm gonna work with you, Bill. He said, okay, let's start right now. It's amazing. So, he, we were making black and white then. This was before his oh, right. monumental really? color <laughs> exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in 1976. This was 1974. That's amazing. So he taught me how to make print and process film, black and white. But it wasn't like, I'm going to teach you time. Yeah, sure. It yeah. was like, you were kind let's of just, just start to work. 
Yeah. Let's do it, and we do it. He said, hey, don't worry about anything. We jump in the middle, and we do it. That's the best, because you can take what you want. Real. I mean, you know, it's a cliche, but they say you've got the eye or you don't. You know, it's like... Just well, like with music, it's That's like, a persona. You can't teach it. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like you've kind of tapped into a lot of stuff uh, over years. You know, like films. Uh, I'm working on my movie, my part two of my trilogy right now. Cool. The thingy, uh, the, Iran- descend- the Iranian Iran- trilogy. I did part one, and that was shown. Mm. I showed it in a number of places. Black and white motion picture film, 16 millimeter. Yeah. Now we have just started part two. I wrote the screenplay in July yeah. for part two and three. And they're all going to be featured? featured like, or... Yeah, it's going to be. A fe- but I'm, I'm combining so part one, expensive. two, and three into one feature. So I'm truncating part one mm-hmm. to be shorter. And oh, now right, we're doing okay. part two and three. And they're going to be separated by intertitles. An extravaganza of, of all three. Well, shown it's not an extravaganza, but it is back a... Back to back, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Separated by intertitles. Oh, Part said. one, two, three. That's it. We just started filming in Upper Austria on the at the at the uh, Villa Paulik, the Clint Villa. I mean, that's another thing. Like you're living in a place that's so cinematic. Anyway, it's hot. I mean, it must be really easy to find great. Scenes, you know, it's like great it's like in England imagery, places. Yeah. People live in what was there 300 years ago. It's not yeah, a museum. Right. They yeah. live and breathe and live in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what excites me that this is not a wax museum. This is yeah. a living legacy of the past, yet it is uh, concurrent with the modern and postmodern and post postmodern world we live in. Yeah. They just don't destroy it and dispose of it. Exactly. They use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and they one built thing, it yeah. to last. The monarchy built to last, man. So I'm using this atmosphere and this architectural and cultural ambiance uh, to make the Iranian trilogy of intrigue films. But the intrigue is only a vehicle for a undercurrent of poetic parallels. The parallel to the muse Urania, the muse of the heavens. And her avatar who comes to earth okay. in a most unlikely form of a disaffected American girl <laughs> who comes from the Arkansas, by the Arkansas River uh, and gets a one-way ticket to Vienna for a number of psychological compulsions. Is there and any all of you in there? Uh, I mean, obviously, like... There's some of every well, writer know, and every work. But I, like, I, pl- I play a secondary role in the film. But I mean, in in her compulsion to hit Vienna, well, or is that sense, just incidental? I wrote it, but I wrote it about a female. This film uh, has poetic and not so much mystic, but Orphic mm-hmm. nuances that um, are predicated upon just a mundane story of intrigue. Mm-hmm. But, um, hey, look at rock and roll. Look at the blues. Look at booty music. It's music about everyday life, often silly lyrics. They don't mean much in a sense. But in voodoo, it's the undercurrent that means something. And they use this as a vehicle to evoke something else. That's really and this is what I do that. with, with yeah, Panther because Birds. on the surface it looks like a kind of rambunctious, uh, almost like haphazard, it, on purposely haphazard almost, like, like the, the, you don't want it to be too polished. But under that, I know, I can see that like, there's, there's real thought gone into everything that you do. Well, it's and the so unconscious. I like the, this idea that you, yeah, like... Because I'm trying to bring something out of here, it, like expressionism in art. Mm. It's not the outside, it's the inside. Yeah, yeah. And, and mysticism is in the air, but the Orphic vision is in the earth, where Orpheus went to get Eurydice. That's the underground, and that's where the creative impulse is. And for loads of avenues, you've been, you know, 
It's all the same deal. Photographs, yeah, exactly. films, music. So like, it's the same persona. It's the same song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so no that's, difference. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I only sing one song. <laughs> it's been a fucking pleasure. Thank you so much for your interest. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. And thank you for your music and for your band. And thank for, you. For who you are. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today.